Thank you for the introduction. So, hi, I'm Jungi Kim from KAIS. I'm going to present our MBA. It is a high performance packet processing framework for heterogeneous processors. This work is done in collaboration with Gon Zhang, now at Intel, and Gunong Lee, Sangung Ma, Junyan Shim, and Su Moon at KAIS. Of course, you know that this talk is not going to be about this MBA. Our MBA stands for Network Balancing Act and it represents the relentless efforts to find optimal balances and trades off in network packet processing systems. To extract maximum throughput from any platform, the speed of I.O. and computation should match. Yet, we cannot sacrifice flexibility for high performance. And we worry what components should go into hardware versus software. Finally, how should we spread workloads among multi-cores and heterogeneous processors. Application requirements and hardware supports have changed and will keep changing. And so we have to keep making choices to balance and trade off. We have built the MBA framework to do balancing and trading off for you. Before we present details of MBA, let me first give a brief overview, overview of the evolution history of the software-based packet processing frameworks. First, the clean modular router by Eddie Kohler. It is the most popular framework used by many for its abstractions. Click has introduced a fine-grained modular architecture for packet processing. The example here shows a hypothetical software router including an IP lookup module and IPsec encryption modules with all stock click elements. In click, each packet processing function is abstracted as an element and they can be composed with other elements. Click glues them with a declarative configuration language. So the resulting packet processing pipeline becomes a directed graph of connected elements where packets flow through the connections among elements. This design has allowed researchers and en engineers to create, combine, and reuse a number of packet processing modules over time. It is still the platform for prototyping and evaluation. But it was designed 15 years ago, so when most PC and commodity hardware used a single core CPU and network speed was in the order of megabps and not gigabps like these days. Now what came after Click? There were a number of approaches to improve Click's performance. Robbricks has introduced support for multi queue network cars and horizontal scaling, and thus first passed the 10, G 10 gigabps war with clustering. Double click has introduced computation batching to click and further improved the performance. Snap has introduced GPU acceleration to click. On the other end, Packet Shader has demonstrated the potential of GPU acceleration for routing and IPsec encryption. It was the first to reach beyond 40 gigabit PS on a single machine. However, its programming interface was monolithic so that application developers had to write all GPU interaction calls manually for every new application and also had to optimize them manually. We believe that next generation packet processing framework should combine these two uh, advantages and uh, strike a balance. So our goal is to achieve both flexibility and high performance. We have gathered useful ideas from existing work, such as modular abstraction, multi-core scale-up architectures, and GPU acceleration capability. <laughs> then we analyzed them and found that computation batching is still incomplete, and GPU acceleration or offloading is mainly engineered toward high performance instead of usability. This is where MBA comes in. It optimizes a fully batched packet processing pipeline, but still preserves clicks intuitive per packet abstraction. Then it provides a new offloading abstraction that improves reusability of GPU buff buffers and brings more optimization opportunities. Last, MBA offers a simple adaptive load balancer that maximizes throughput with any combination of workloads and thus eliminate the optimization efforts. 
Here is the high-level diagram on how MBA works. The packet IEO components are based on Intel DPDK for maximum performance. DPDK, or Data Plane Development Kit, is a famous user-based network driver suite open sourced by Intel. It offers low latency poor mode network card drivers and highly optimized multi-core programming libraries. MBA uses DPDK to receive and transmit packets using multi-core network cards for multi-core scalability and to implement efficient memory management. <coughs> of course, MBA's programming interface is mostly independent to DPDK so that you don't have to worry much about DPDK when using MBA. In the middle, MBA runs multiple worker threads pinned to individual CPU cores. They execute packet processing pipeline composed of usual defined elements. There is another type of thread for interaction with GPUs or other accelerator devices. It is dedicated for handling device runtime, such as buffer management and synchronization. The reason to separate device threads from worker threads is to avoid internal synchronization overheads found in GPU runtimes. So um, let me show how MBA makes your life easier with a concrete example. Let's imagine a middle box that encrypts all incoming packets and just for them. Of course, we want to make it run fast and to be accelerated by GPUs without any manual optimization efforts. So we make a simple pipeline configuration like this and put your my encrypt main element here. What if you are still using the clean modular router? In click, you just write a simple per packet processing function as an element class. It's just easy and intuitive. In MBA, even with computation batching, you still write per packet functions though there are some extensions and changes to, for more efficient multi-thread supports. The handler interface is similar to Click, but it's much simpler because there is no separate pushy or pure semantics of elements that actually have limited composability of Click elements. Using MBA, you get great performance boost as it exploits advantages of multi-core architectures. Depending on the complexity of your packet processing function, you can reach up to 80 gigabit PS. Then, how is that possible? So, uh, there are multiple factors that gives a performance boost, but the major performance gain uh, for a single thread comes from computation batching. And to implement computation batching, we apply two solutions. The first one is to just wrap packet processing handlers with for loops over the batch of input packets. That's it. The, it has no other tricks here. So the second one is the interesting part. Elements with multiple outputs in batched modular packet processing pipelines incur high performance overheads due to split of batches. It's because packets in the same batch may take different processing passes after processing. So let me explain more details about this. Well, during development of MBA, we observed most packets take the same path for at most branches, meaning the branches are highly unbalanced. That's because MBA internally manages the mapping between IO elements and the RXTX queues of the network cards, and therefore branches are mainly used for packet filters instead of packet routers or classifiers as in the original click. For example, check IP header element filters out invalid IP packets, which are very rare cases. In MBA, routing decisions are stored at packet metadata or annotations, so routing elements also do not have branches at all in most cases. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> Exploiting this characteristic of MBA pipelines, we devised a simple branch prediction technique. On each <laughs> branch, MBA predicts how many packets will take the majority path depending on the processing results of pre pre previous batches. It reuses the original batch for the majority path and masks the packets that took other passes. 
And for the other passes, it allocates a new small batch object and just copy the pointers of packets to them. We measure the effectiveness of this branch prediction technique using a simple branch with two outputs. We vary the ratio of minority packets from 1 to 50%. When only 1% of tech packets take the minority path, the overhead is reduced from 38% to 10% with branch prediction. Of course, we have some more ideas to improve the design and implementation of batch processing and the branching performance, so we are now working on that. The next step is to accelerate your element with GPU. In an ideal world, you could just connect your GPU corner with other CPU element, then it should just work. But I think you guys know that this is not the case in the reality. So we need to do a lot of work like here, including batching, pipelining, preparation of buffers, data copies from to the GPU, and synchronization. All of this makes uh, using GPUs a difficult task. Uh, Snap in 2013 has introduced new click elements that correspond to such operations. But still, you need to understand how GP GPU acceleration works. Moreover, the surrounding elements requires GPU corner specific configurations and expose non-packet processing details to the pipeline. We believe that this is kind of a critical hole of abstraction. In contrast, MBA fully automates and hide all these details, so just let you think like in the ideal world. To write GPU elements in MBA, you need to use several text as listed here. But most of them are straightforward, so I'm going to skip them. The most critical part is GPU buffer management because it's most performance critical, and uh, you may have a lot of bugs when, if you do not uh, carefully program this. So let's see how MBA makes your life easier about this. In MBA, you don't have to write buffer management code by yourself at all. Instead, all you need to is declare data blocks. So data blocks specify which portion of packets will be copied to or from the GPU. It has for combination of types, so fixed length or variable length, or and uh, host to device or device to host copy directions. MBA implements the underlying copying steps very efficiently. So it aggregates multiple data blocks from multiple batches to maximize the parallelism in GPUs and merges the same data blocks from multiple batches into a single continuous buffer to reduce API calling overhead. So the benefit of this data block abstraction comes in twofold. First, it covers most common packet processing applications such as routers, encryption gateways, network address translators, and WAN optimizers. Whatever application you build, we believe that data block abstraction greatly saves your effort and time for GPU acceleration. Also, please note that data block abstraction is highly customizable and not limited to raw packet data. So data blocks can define their own pre-processing and post-processing functions and choose different parallelization unit instead of uh, individual packets. So we hope to see future applications to exploit this flexibility of data block abstraction. Second, data block abstraction allows new optimization opportunities. These opportunities are enabled by separation of GPU elements and the data blocks. So this allows sharing of data blocks by different GPU elements, and this improves code reusability and modularity. For example, AES element and HMX Shawn element may share the same packet payload data block. So the additional optimization opportunities are as follows. The first opportunity is to reuse data blocks is to reuse data blocks already copied to the GPU for later GPU elements. So actually, we have already implemented this after uh, like a paper submission, but we are doing more optimization work now. The second opportunity is to merge different data blocks into one single 
into a single one to coalesce data copies. In fact, SNAP has introduced this technique first. However, we exclude that from MBA because our application does not have any benefits from this technique. Okay, so we have covered how you are going to build your own GPU accelerated packet processor. But there is one more thing. So, GPU is a great device that offers fast computation power with cheap prices. However, is it always faster to use it for every, for every cases? Well, we observed that the performance gains by GPU depends on what application and workload you run. Even when the GPU performance is higher than that of CPU, offloading all to GPU may not yield the maximum throughput possible. So let me show one of such cases here. We ran an IPsec encryption application and have replayed packet trace. This figure shows that st the throughput variation depending on the offloading ratio under the same workload. The maximum throughput is achieved when 80% of workloads are offloaded to GPU, not when we offload everything. It is 18% higher throughput compared to when we offload everything. So this result suggests that we need to find the optimal offloading weight for every new application and new workloads. So how do we achieve the optimal performance without this kind of manual tuning? In the current version of MBA, we have implemented a simple feedback-based adaptive load balancer. By default, MBA uses only CPUs even when it encounters GPU elements without explicit load balancers. To use GPUs, you need to insert a load balancer element before GPU elements. They decide whether to use G CPU or GPU in the following GPU elements for the given batch. Our adaptive load balancer probabilistically chooses CPU or GPU depending on the offloading weight between 0 and 1. It then monitors the total system throughput and the direction of changes. Depending on this information, it adds or subtracts some fixed amount of delta from to the offloading weight. So, to smooth out local fluctuation jitters, we made the history size of the low pass filter sufficiently large. To avoid local maxima, we periodically insert perturbations to the offloading weight. Our evaluation shows that even this simple kind of heuristic adaptive load balancer, or ALB, is highly effective. We have compared the performance of four cases here. The first blue bars show the performance of manually optimized cases where we exhaustively search the optimal offloading weight. The second yellow bars show the performance tuned by our adaptive load balancer, and the rest are the cases when we use only CPU or GPUs. We tried diverse combination of workloads and applications to show ALB's generality. The performance of our load balancer achieves more than uh, reaches more than 92% of manually optimized performances, regardless whatever workload and what processor the, each workload have the strength. So this result indicates that you do not need to manually optimize and find the optimal ways to maximize the throughput if you are using MBA. There are many other details here, so please refer the paper for them. So let me conclude this work. MBA is the world's first 80 gigabit PS capable packet processing framework, not for a single application, but, general applic but for general applications. We are going to position it as a next generation clean modular router. So the social code is now available on GitHub, so please use it and give me feedback and pull requests as well. Still, there are many things to improve in MBA. We have finished the implementation of data blocks, as, as I said before, which was presented as future work in the paper, but still doing more optimization. Also, we are going to elaborate the models and design of load balancers to reduce like, com convergence time and accuracy. To extend MBA for different types of accelerator devices, we are doing early analysis on the performance characteristics 
characteristics of Intel Xeon Phi for packet processing applications. So please note that MBA is not a finished product, but a continuously evolving platform. This concludes my presentation, and I'm happy, happy to take your questions. Thank you, Jongi. Questions right over there. Thanks, uh, Matthew Grosvenor from Cambridge. This is uh, really interesting stuff. Um, just a, a really quick question. Uh, when you say 80 gigabits per second, at, at what packet size? Uh, pardon? When, when you say 80 gigabits per second, 80 GPS, uh -huh. uh, what packet size? Is it jumbo uh, frames, 1500 bytes, 64K? What was the? Uh, it's uh, for simpler workloads like IPv4 to look up. So uh, the maximum 80 gigabit performance is achieved with like packets larger than um, 200 bytes or so. So for 64 byte packets, we have bottleneck in the I/O bus. So the maximum throughput with our current hardware is like 62 gigabit. Okay, so that that's pretty high packet rates. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, um, I, I was curious, uh, your ad adaptive load balancing algorithm, does it work when you have multiple competing jobs for the CPU and GPU at the same time? Uh, currently, it works only for CPU and GPU, but we are going to uh, make a general model to predict uh, like estimated processing cost in uh, each processor, uh, regardless of what the processor itself is. So. Actually, I have some uh, only the result about this on the poster outside. So yeah, you can come to me and talk about this. Any further questions? If not, then let's thank Jongi once more. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>